Hi, my name is Kevin and welcome to this tutorial on how to do probe scanning in EVE Online. First things first, in order to do probe scanning safely, you have to uh, have set up your overview and your D scan. So the overview, you have to be able to see uh, rats and sleepers because they can be pretty dangerous in wormhole space and of course enemy ships. Also you would like to see wormholes and possibly some other things to your liking. So you can fix that by going up to the overview panel, click it and just open overview settings then head on to tab presets and types and there you can see what things you'd like to see in your overview. This is also how you make new overviews in different tabs and so on. So here I've set up a, a special overview for wormholes. Additionally, you'd like to set a, f a filter for your D scanner so you can see things that are in wormholes. And here I have one for wormholes and you can see I can see uh, stations and uh, uh, you should be able to see post towers, citadels and stuff like that, but also possibly wrecks and maybe drones to see if the wormhole is active. And of course other probes is important to see. Also combat probes is very important to see so that you know you're not being tracked down while you're not cloaked. Uh, bubbles are also important in wormhole space since they can be used there and in nullsec. next thing you're going to want to do is to set up your shortcuts and in order to do that you just have to hit the escape to get out into the game menu head on to shortcuts and let's find the probe scanner first and let's see there we are and I've set it to alt P you can of course set it to whatever you like further down you should have a solar system map, which is the map we used to do the actual probing on, and it's set to the default F9. Additionally, you can head over to the combat menu, and where you'll find, if you go further up, you can refresh the probe scan with a shortcut key. It doesn't show here, but it's the less than, more than key I used, which is special probably for the Norwegian keyboard. I'm not sure what you use, of course, which can be different because of different layouts in different countries. Further up you have shortcuts for increasing the probe scan range and decreasing the probe scan range which may come in handy if you want to use special shortcuts for that. I don't use it because I simply hit alt and uh, scroll the scroll wheel on the mouse and I think that's fine. So let's try it out. Let's try hit F9 to get the system map and it'll Alt P to get the actual probe scanner and uh, for me this is a bit problematic I don't like to have it in the map you can of course set the layout of the map in various ways to the right just check that but I like to have it to the right side uh, but I think the actual probing window scanning window here is a bit in the way so I like to go out to the square here and just click it to undock it from the map. Just close the map for the time being. So now you'll see the actual probe scanner in the lower right side of the window now. And what we see here is of course you can uh, recover active probes, you can open the map, you can close the map with that icon, you got some formations you can use and you have a launch button which also doubles as a, uh, an analyze button when the probes are actually out. Uh, now there are some ways of launching the probes. You can click the actual module or have it assigned to a shortcut, uh, combat shortcut. You can hit launch pinpoint form formation directly or you can uh, hit analyze or launch. So depending on the situation I like to just uh, launch it in pinpoint so I don't have to press it or if I'm in a hurry I'll press the actual module. Uh, additionally I have a little trick up my sleeve. Uh, if you check my fit you see I have some probes loaded but additionally I have eight more probes in my bay. So the moment I launch these probes the probes in my bay will be loaded. Just check this out. Just launch them and the moment they're launched, 
the eight other probes are reloaded. So the moment I retract these probes, recover them, I already have some other probes ready. So what I usually do when I enter a system is that, let's check out, let's see I've just entered the system, I'm next to a gate or I'm next to a wormhole. I'll just uh, start warping somewhere. Immediately afterwards, I will hit launch, and then I'll be warping away, and I'll probably hit analyze just to take away the probes so nobody knows where I why I was just. So nobody knows where I just were. And then when the actual probes have been reloaded. I hit cloak and that's that I'm safe so that should cover the basics of launching the probes and how to use the probe scanner but there's one more thing in the probe scanner you see a list of signatures cosmic signatures and they all have an ID and you really only have to worry about the first three letters of that ID the number it's it's pretty superfluous I've never seen two signatures have the same letters. Uh, and of course there's a filter so you can also see anomalies if you want to do sites but these aren't really necessary if you're just in a small scanning frigate. So you just need to see the actual signatures. And if you open up the view you see that if you go further in here I can double click each signature and the map automatically moves you to the respective signature. You can also click on the signature on the actual map and then you only need to click once like so and if you press in both mouse buttons you can zoom in and out on the map and what I like to do then is center the probes Let's see here. on a signature that I've decided to scan now and in order to make it bigger you can of course manually increase probe size here but I like to just hit the alt button and use my mouse scroll wheel double click the map to reset the view so I see the, uh, the side view see that it's probably centered and when it's centered and the actual formation is outside the red blob I hit analyze see if this works all right that was our first scan now the first scan you can have a reasonably big ball but on the next scan it's smart to make a smaller ball and what you look, should look for is how close they are the actual signature is to the nearest planet and usually you can make the formation as small as so it reaches inside the planet it doesn't touch the nearest planet it just nearly touches the nearest planet usually that is enough to get a closer or a better scan since most signatures are close or are kind of locked to planets if you know what I mean there we go. That's a much better probe. So we, uh, that was a much better scan. Next time, probably have to do one more and we'll get up to 100%. Now we're down to the smallest size of the formation. So let's hope this works. I'm going to make sure we got it properly centered, like so. Hit my shortcut button to scan. And there we are, we got it. Now let's check the next signature. Just double click, and then we center the formation. Center it again. We use the principle of the closest planet. So I make it a bit bigger. Let's see, okay, that's probably good enough. I hit scan. Well, closest, closest planet or closest celestial. Okay, and then we got our next site, and I see there's a wormhole 
wormhole here too. Let's go there. And again, send red. Now these kinds of signatures we see here, which is a round circle, can be a bit tricky. That means the signature is somewhere along the circles, probably to the right or the left. I just, I'm not sure which side currently, so I'll just scan the whole thing. Make sure the whole circle is inside the formation. That got us a bit closer. Double click it again. Center it. Double click and center. And probably can make it a bit smaller. Uh, maybe like so. Try again. And there we go. We have a wormhole and I can immediately warp to it. I'll warp to it at 100. That's what I usually do. This is basically how probing works. Let's see what it gets us when we get there. Alright, and since I fixed my overview, I can see the wormhole pop up. And we can take a closer look. I can see the information on it. It leads to NullSec. And it's it will last for at least another day. So next thing I'll do, I'll save it. And I like to save it by the name of the signature or the uh, actual signature code. So I'll just call it WOD. WOD. And then what kind of wormhole it is. This is a S199 wormhole. S199. That means this wormhole leads to null second. We can see that by looking at the information. This wormhole seems to lead into null security space. You can also right click and choose show info if you like that better. I like to use the this kind of view, whatever it's called. And then I just put after the name, I just say NS to indicate that this is a null sec wormhole. And additionally, I like to make a tactical, especially if it's a wormhole I'm going to use. I like to make a tactical close to it within warping range. And 100, it's too close to be able to warp. So since there's nobody in the system, I'll just decloak and get a bit more distance between me and the wormhole. Another thing to note here is that you can right click here and save the wormhole. Then you'll see, let's see here, I'll show you. Let's just save it right now. VOD, you'll see, I'll actually save the signature, not the actual wormhole. And it can be quite a distance between these two. And if you save a signature in wormhole space and have to travel, like say, one click to get to the actual wormhole, during that time you can be attacked and you can be killed. So never do that. Always save the actual wormhole. So that's another tip for you. So we've gained about 220. Let's see, I can cloak up now. Just write in WOD and 250 kilometers and save that. That's about where we are now. Before we go, I want to scan down the last signature in this system. Just double click the, the, the actual signature. And this is a special one. This means that either the actual signature is, is here or here. So I'll try my luck on the bottom one first. And this will probably not work because it's usually closer to the planet. And the planet is, of course, the closest planet is up here. So most likely is, uh, it's up here, but sometimes CCP, they like to troll you a bit. And it's actually on the opposite side. So to make sure, I'll just scan the wrong side first. Probably it won't work, but you know, then we'll have to scan again. And sadly, I was right. So I put it back up, center it on the other ball, and let's see, try again, this time it should work. And there we are, another combat site. And I pull the probes immediately after scanning all the, the sites, make sure I'm cloaked. 
and then we can save each one here. I don't really need those, but I'll do it anyway. That's a QTI. I like to leave the name if it's a combat site. This is a ruins. Just this is Z X Y Z X Y, and the blood annex VNS VNS, and make sure I've saved the actual wormhole. I have W O D, and for a last treat. I'll show you how you actually enter a hot wormhole. So the thing you want to do is the moment you enter a new wormhole, you want to right click the actual wormhole and go save. And then you want to warp away to a planet or other celestial that is nearby and immediately release your probes if there are any signatures that you can scan down and hit scan so they don't know where you came from cloak up the moment all your probes are reloaded and then keep on probing so let's see how this goes into Nulsic we go hopefully there's not a madman on the other side in the saber or something like that that can bubble us. In case there is, sometimes people will decloak next to you. Just hit control space as fast as you can and go back to the wormhole you came from. So the first thing we want to do, we got some time, the timer is going down. And you can right click the wormhole, go down to save and just hit submit immediately. And there are two signatures here, so I'll just check a planet, probably this one maybe doesn't matter which really hit warp and then I want to release my probes and analyze as quickly as possible so they don't know where I came from and there's nobody in the system so it's pretty safe and there you see that's probably the one I came from and now my probes have reloaded and of course then I can go straight back at a hundred so I'll be able to make a tactical so I don't have to land exactly straight on the wormhole this is good if there if, if it's a camp wormhole for instance because uh, if they got bubbles out you won't be caught in the bubbles you'll just go straight to the tactical instead so I'll just make the tactical real quick there we go and we can decloak and coast a bit and while this is happening, since I have an overview of Nullsec and I can see it's pretty safe to just stay decloaked. And let's go to the next signature. We already know where we came from, so I don't need to scan that one. But I'll scan the next one. So the wormhole we came from, it's probably B O O. Shall I just write that down? B O O. And the other one is a data site, which I can hack. Which is great because then I'll earn some more money. And incidentally, yeah, I have a data scanner already, data analyzer installed. So this is actually a bit lucky for me. But actual hacking, I'll save for another video. And let's see. Center and center and make smaller scan again Let's see how far we gotten I can probably cloak now press F1 for that so these shortcuts very nice to have and I can just pull the probes right now since the other one has to be the worm hell I came out from close this one and just make sure this one is B O O and um it's uh, K162 to low sec. I could put in more information there if I wanted to. And this is the data size FBV. And I like to put in a little label just so I know it is a data site. And then we can work to it. And that's just about that. Now I have the wormhole saved, so I can go safely back home. Oh, I forgot the tactical. Well, well, it's not no biggie. And I've shown you how to do some 
quick probing so you'll at least get started doing it and well that's it good probing <laughs>